Welcome to the TI Precision Lab series on light sensors. My name is Alex Bendar Young, and I'm an Applications Engineer at Texas Instruments. In the first video of this chapter, we discussed how light sensors are often placed within an enclosure. An aperture in the form of a hole or window in the enclosure allows the ambient light to reach the sensor. Both the aperture size and the distance between the sensor and the aperture directly affect the sensor field of view. In some cases, limitations on the aperture size and the distance may result in poor field of view. In this video, we will discuss the impact of adding optical components to the system to improve the field of view. Specifically, we will discuss the use of lenses, diffusers, and light pipes. The first optical element that can be used to increase field of view are lenses. We often think of lenses as something to magnify an image or focus light. While some lenses do indeed do this, all lenses work by their ability to bend light. To increase field of view, light coming from larger angles of incidence needs to be bent so that it hits the sensor at a smaller angle of incidence. To discuss how lenses can help with this, consider the familiar example of the peephole sometimes seen in doors. Without any lenses, a simple hole in the door would severely limit the field of view, resulting in difficulty seeing a person standing on the other side. The lenses in the peephole allow wider angles of light to enter the hole, and as a consequence, it is possible to see most of a person standing very close to the door. To achieve this, peepholes use an ultra-wide angle lens, sometimes called a fisheye lens, to increase the area one can see by bending the light. The problem of field of view for a light sensor is very similar to the problem of the peephole indoors. A poor enclosure aperture can prevent most angles of light from reaching the sensor. A fisheye lens can bend the light to a lower angle of incidence that can pass through the aperture and reach the sensor, resulting in an increased field of view. Lenses can be a very effective solution for expanding the field of view, but are often not practical. A single lens can have a small effect on the field of view. However, a proper fisheye lens is actually a combination of several lenses in series. Keeping the lenses aligned relative to one another is critical for their performance. This requires high precision in the system assembly and can add a significant amount of thickness and cost to the final product. Because of the increased cost and complexity, lenses are rarely practical with ambient light sensors. Diffusers are another way of increasing the system field of view, but do so in a very different way than lenses. A diffuser is any optical element that in some way scatters light or randomizes the angular profile of light with respect to the initial angle of incidence. Diffusers are often described as softening bright light sources in this way. Diffusers can either be reflective or transmissive. Most objects in the real world behave as a reflective diffuser. Things like walls, wood, and cloth often have unsmooth surfaces with slight bumps that scatter the reflective light into many angles. Transmissive diffusers also scatter light, but do so with light passing through, not reflecting off the surface. Transmissive diffusers can be achieved with surface textures, like with frosted glass or simple film diffusers. Transmissive diffusers can also be created by using small lens arrays called a Fresnel diffuser, often used in covers for overhead lighting to more evenly light a room. It is transmissive diffusers we discuss to increase the field of view for light sensors. In an ideal diffuser, a beam of light entering at any angle of incidence would produce a uniform angular profile exiting the diffuser. The scattering characteristics of a diffuser are captured using angular profiles like the one displayed. 
These are similar to the angular profiles we use to characterize field of view, but the angles in these profiles are relative to the angle of incidence, not the surface. As an example, with the above graph, the 0.5 mark is at 15 degrees, sometimes called the scattering, or half angle. For light entering at 0 degrees, half of the light will exit the diffuser between plus and minus 15 degrees. But if light enters the diffuser at a 30 degree angle of incidence, half of the light intensity will exit the diffuser between 15 and 45 degrees. Typically, for most angles of incidence, the scattering profile does not vary significantly, and in many cases, diffusers are only specified by their half angle. However, testing is needed to verify the performance of the fully integrated system. The next chapter of this series covers testing for field of view. So how can a transmissive diffuser help increase a light sensor's field of view? Since a diffuser scatters light in many directions, the sensor reading is a combination of light hitting it at many angles along its angular profile, not just the original angle of incidence. This has the effect of smoothing out the angular response of the system, making the highs and lows come closer together, as shown. As an example of this, look at the displayed graph where the angular profile of a system changes before and after we apply the narrow 15 degree diffuser from before. The field of view is increased by 18 degrees with the diffuser. To increase the field of view even more, we could use a diffuser with an increased half angle. However, the diffuser will scatter to angles lower on the system response curve, causing light attenuation. The wider the half angle of a diffuser, and the more restrictive the aperture or sensor, the more light will be lost due to scattering, as shown in the lower image. In the example plot, the 15 degree diffuser caused a scattering loss of 41% to get the improved field of view. In addition to scattering losses, transmissive diffusers will also attenuate the transmitted light. Using a simple film diffuser can work to expand the field of view at a low price but can have light attenuation around 60% before scattering losses are considered. Fresnel-type diffusers can be thin, like film diffusers, and can have attenuation in the 10% range, but at a significant increase in per unit price. If light attenuation and its lowered sensitivity are designed for, a simple film diffuser can be sufficient for systems with a very narrow field of view. Compensation and calibration for this type of attenuation are discussed in the next chapter of this series. Light pipes are the final optical element we will discuss to increase the field of view of a light sensor. When light hits an interface between two materials with different indices of refraction, it will usually reflect and transmit some amount of the light, depending on the angle of incidence. If the light is traveling from materials with a higher index of refraction to a lower index of refraction and is at or above a certain angle of incidence called the critical angle, all light will be reflected. This is known as total internal reflection, or TIR. Light pipes are designed in such a way to take advantage of TIR to transmit light at very low loss to different points in a system. They are usually clear cylinders made out of optical plastic that at angles of incidence less than around 80 degrees will have light TIR inside until it exits the other end. If the input and output surface is parallel on the light pipe, light will exit at the initial angle of incidence. For ambient light sensors, a light pipe can be used to bypass the angular limitations of apertures in the system. In effect, we can bring the sensor to the top of the light pipe, reducing the distance between the aperture and the sensor, increasing field of view. As an example, take a look at the displayed system angular response plot in gray. We see a system severely limited in field of view by a window aperture. If we add a perfectly placed light pipe between the sensor and window, 
we will increase the system angular response to be very close to the sensor's angular response, as shown in blue. To get the biggest field of view increase, light pipes should be at or slightly above the highest aperture, and the bottom should be placed directly on the sensor. Also, to maximize performance, the diameter of the light pipe should be roughly the same size as the aperture to ensure as much light as possible can enter the light pipe and reach the sensor. Light pipes do come with some drawbacks. The light pipes will usually lose between 5% and 10% due to light scattering over short distances. While light pipes don't require the precision of lenses, they still need to be positioned correctly to perform as expected. Light pipes are also sometimes used in applications where they are required to bend light to a sensor not aligned with the aperture. However, putting a bend in a light pipe can greatly reduce its field of view because it can reduce the angle of incidence below the critical angle for TIR. If bending a light pipe is required, the radius of curvature should be as wide as possible. Even with these limitations, for a system where a distant aperture is limiting the system's field of view, a light pipe can significantly increase the field of view. In summary, we have covered three ways to increase the field of view beyond the limits set by system level constraints. Lenses can significantly increase the field of view if designed and built correctly. If the absolutely best field of view performance is required, then using a lens array may be the best choice for your system. The downside of lenses is the increased bill of materials cost, the added system complexity required, and the size, making them impractical in most light sensing applications. Diffusers are a good low-cost, low-complexity option to increase field of view. This is especially true in applications less sensitive to the light attenuation from the diffuser scattering and absorption. If low light sensitivity is also important, then a Fresnel diffuser offers attenuation of 10% or less at a significant price increase. Light pipes can also be used to significantly increase the field of view of a system. Unlike typical diffusers, they offer much less light attenuation by completely bypassing apertures. However, this comes at an increased cost and assembly complexity in comparison to a simple diffuser. No matter what optical element is chosen, care must be given to any unit-to-unit -unit variations introduced by these added components. Variations in the optical elements themselves will contribute to this, as well as variation in assembly and placement. Additionally, for components with higher attenuation, such as diffusers, compensation is often required. Details on both compensation and unit-to-unit -unit variation are provided in the next chapter of this series. To find more light sensor technical resources, and to search TI products, please visit the link shown. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Please try the following quiz. In a system with limited field of view where light attenuation is not a concern, what is the most effective solution for the lowest cost? The correct answer is B. Diffusers are usually the lowest cost way to increase a limited field of view. This will come at the cost of some light attenuation. 